This is Midday Classics on WSKG. I'm Bill Snyder. The Binghamton chapter of the American Guild of Organists is presenting organist Joseph Maxwell Osai Little in a performance on Saturday, November 11th at 2 p.m. in the United Presbyterian Church, 42 Shenango Street in Binghamton. Joseph, what's on the program? Okay, we have um, uh, lots of works um, on the program. Um, there's a, um, a work by um, African-American composer Carl Haywood, um, works by J.S. Bach, um, works by Florence Price, um, and then um, a couple of works by Buxter Huda from the um, late Baroque period, um, a couple of pieces from the Romantic period by Louise Vienne, and then a couple of um, 20th century pieces as well. So sort of a mixture of everything yeah now you're from ghana and ghana is known for its vibrant music scene uh how does her organ uh show up in that music scene okay um ghana is uh, as you said has a very vibrant music um culture um especially when it comes to church and singing and there are lots of choral groups in ghana um who are hosting concerts and um, uh, programs, workshops, so many things happening on the choral music scene and on, generally on the music scene in Ghana. But the organ sort of plays a very huge role in um, church music. Um, there aren't so many pipe organs, actual pipe organs in Ghana, but there are a lot of electronic ones. Um, um, mentioning the Allen organ, Johannes organ, um, Viscount organs. So that so many of them in churches now and um, so many organists find themselves learning it and playing it, using it for churches. And then sometimes it features in some concerts by some of these youth choirs that I talked about. Um, some of the songs they would like to have an organ play along with it. It's sort of a, a growing culture right now in Ghana, yes. Now, Joseph, I understand that you are trained as a pharmacist. How did you end up becoming an organist? Yes, that is very interesting. Um, so I trained as, an, um, as a pharmacist in, um, in the university for my undergraduate. But whilst I was studying, I, I, I knew I loved music because I had studied music um, just before I entered into high school. So I had a love and a passion for it. So whilst I was studying for pharmacy, I was finding time to go to the music department of the University of Ghana to go and practice on the piano and practice some pieces. And then I also joined a choir, actually two choirs on campus that I was playing for. And it sort of also helped me continue to nurture my musical talent. So it was sort of a, a getaway from the pharmacy stuff uh, whilst I was in college. So yeah, that's how I found the, the time to, to balance the two. Yeah. Now, now there is the story on your bio about how you got two lessons and then you were thrown into a competition yes yes um so um my very first um, few lessons came from my older brother and it was just um um lessons on how to recognize the notes on the staff and how to find your way around the keyboard and then there was this competition that our school was eligible for but unfortunately my older brother had completed school at that time so he couldn't stand for the competition so i had to um, go in his place and then yeah there was a singing competition that we had to sight read some pieces of music and test our general musical knowledge and then I placed fourth out of um, 16 candidates so I realized that uh, I have the the niche for music and then I decided to pursue that yeah as, as, as part of my my studies in science now what with COVID and everything else it's it's been very difficult for you to get to Syracuse, hasn't it? It was really, really tough. Um, I got admission in the year 2020, but unfortunately, COVID struck. Everything just went to a standstill. So I had to defer my admission for a year. Um, I tried um, applying for the visa um, at the embassy. I went for the interview. I was denied. Um, I tried again for the second time. I was denied. So I had to, you know, postpone my admission to another year again. So I had to defer twice. Um, so I went for the interview for the third time. And then fortunately, 
I was able to get it. So I had admission in 2020, but I was able to come to Syracuse in 2022. Now, um, violinists always carry their violins with them. Uh, singers always carry their instrument with them, but you you have to get to know uh, the organ that you're performing on. At, at how long does it take you to uh, become acquainted with a new organ? Um. Okay. So um, a new organ that would take me a couple of hours, maybe some five six hours on an organ, um, to sort of find my way around how my pieces would fit in. You know, every organ has its own. Um, layouts, different stops and stuff like that. So you would want to check out how your piece is going to sound, whether the instrument is really going to bring out the, the beauty in that piece. So if I should get about a five to six hours on the organ, that should be okay for me to find my way around, sort of get adjusted, and then, yeah, yeah, get sorted. Yep. Well, in this case, the organ is the organ at United Presbyterian Church at 42 Shenango Street in Binghamton. And my guest has been Joseph Maxwell Osai Little, who is performing under the auspices of the Binghamton chapter of the American Guild of Organists on Saturday, November 11th at 2 p.m. If you'd like more information, you can go online to binghamtonago.org. And as always, we invite viewers to like and subscribe to WSKG Public Media. And my guest has been organist Joseph Maxwell Osai Little. Thanks for joining us. Thank you for hosting me. I really appreciate it.